My top round roast is going to turn out great. Usually when I make pot roast, I use chuck roast, but this time I'm going to use top round. It does have a bit of a reputation for not being as tender as chuck because as you can see, it doesn't have as much marbling, but I think that by cooking it in the oven for three hours with a lot of vegetables and a lot of liquid like vegetable stock and red wine, and then adding my flavorings, I think it's gonna turn out tender and delicious. Here I have one top round roast. It's 2.3 pounds. I recommend between two to three pounds. More than that, it's gonna be possibly too heavy to take in and out of the oven. I am gonna brown it in the skillet and then put it in my nine by 13 casserole dish. Although browning it on all sides is not required, I highly recommend that you do because it's going to add a lot of flavor. Then I'm going to deglaze the skillet with one cup of red wine, and then I'm going to add my vegetables. Here I have four pounds of vegetables, a mix of white potatoes, carrots, sweet potatoes, a red potato, red onion, small yellow onion, and celery. But feel free to use whatever you have on hand. I'm going to heat up this oil for a minute on medium heat, then I'm going to start searing the roast. My tablespoon of oil has been heating for about a minute over medium heat, so now it's time to take the roast and start searing it. I just finished searing my meat. I put it off to the side. It took about 15 minutes over medium to medium high heat. Now I'm going to deglaze the pan. Still on medium high heat, I'm going to add one cup of red wine, or in my case, three quarters of a cup of Concord grape juice and a quarter cup of red wine vinegar. I know it sounds odd, but juice and vinegar is actually a really good substitute for wine if you do not have wine on hand. So if you want to use white wine or white wine substitute, white grape juice and white wine vinegar. To this, I'm also going to add onion soup mix. If you follow my channel, you know I really like onion soup mix. I'm going to add this in so that it can hydrate, stir it in a little bit, and then I will bring you back. Now it's time to add the potatoes, carrots, and the rest of the vegetables to the pan with the roast. I really didn't cut them up in any particular way. I would say that this potato I cut into maybe an inch to an inch and a half thick slices. There really is no right or wrong way to do this. I would say one to two inches is probably what you want. You don't want them to be too thin because if the pieces are too thin, then they'll fall apart. And if they're too thick, then it might not cook through. Or if some pieces are significantly smaller or bigger than others, then some of the pieces will cook through while others won't. Like I said, there aren't too many rules when it comes to the vegetables. Just make sure that they're about one to one and a half inches thick, maybe two inches. Make sure that they're all about the same size and don't cut them too early because potatoes will oxidize. They'll turn brown when they're exposed to air. So have your roast already seared and ready to go before you start cutting up the potatoes. Now that everything is in the pan, I'm gonna pour over the red wine and onion soup mix. And I'm pouring over this now because the liquid is going to help prevent the potatoes from oxidizing too much. I am gonna add more liquid First, I'm gonna add some spices. Here, I have half a teaspoon each of garlic powder, onion powder, 
and black pepper. I'm going to add some Worcestershire sauce, which is salty, so I may just add a dash of salt later, but I don't think you really need to add any salt if you add Worcestershire sauce. Because that is fairly salty as is. I think a little bit of oregano, parsley would be good in this too. Maybe some Italian seasoning, whatever you want. Like I said, I'm gonna add some Worcestershire sauce, a quarter cup. I think it really brings out the beefy flavor. It's perfect in this recipe. If you don't have Worcestershire sauce, I would add soy sauce. I'm also gonna do something a little bit different today. I'm gonna to add some yellow mustard. Some of the recipes I saw online for top round roast called for mustard. And honestly, I think those recipes are a bit different. They call for spreading mustard on the outside of the roast and then using it as kind of a glue to put on some spices. But like I said earlier in the video, top round roast is not as fatty. It doesn't have as much fat as chuck roast does. So I think to make it tender, a little bit more acid would be not a bad thing. So I'm going to add some mustard. I'm going to go with, let's see, two tablespoons because I don't want it to be too acidic because there is Worcestershire sauce. But I think two tablespoons of mustard. I'm gonna add a little bit more. I don't think I had level tablespoons. It's going to be good. No more than a quarter cup. I think two tablespoons is just right. Okay. And now for more liquid, I'm gonna add some homemade vegetable stock. You could definitely use store-bought. I'm gonna add three cups of my homemade vegetable stock. It's over here. You could use beef broth, store-bought or homemade. I have actually never used store-bought beef broth, but a lot of people say that it tastes odd. It tastes kind of fake, so you might want to just go with store-bought vegetable stock. As I poured in the three cups of vegetable stock, I found clumps of the onion soup mix and just picked them apart and put them into the broth or on pieces of the meat or potatoes that looked like they weren't covered. As I noticed that when I poured in the onion soup mix, it kind of clumped. Now I'm going to cover this with foil and bake it in the oven at 350 for two hours. Then I'll take it out, baste the meat and the vegetables with the liquid. Then I'll cook it uncovered at 350 for 40 minutes. Then I'll turn off the oven, let it sit in there, still uncovered for 20 minutes, and then it will, will be time to eat. My top brown roast cooked covered at 350 for two hours. Now I'm just going to baste it as well as baste the potatoes and the carrots and the other vegetables. And then it's going to go back into the oven at 350 uncovered for 40 minutes. Then I'm going to turn off the oven and let it sit for 20 minutes. So another hour. My top round roast is now done. It was in for a total of three hours. First two hours covered at 350 Fahrenheit, then uncovered at 350 for 40 minutes. Then I turned off the oven and I let it sit for another 20. And actually after I took off the foil I flipped the meat and then when I turn off the oven, I flipped the meat again. I just wanted both sides to have some time in the liquid. 
this roast looked great, so I couldn't wait to dig in. When I finally did, I knew that my top round roast in the oven with potatoes and carrots recipe was a big success because it was delicious. Honestly, I thought it tasted very similar to the chuck roast that I've made in the past, the only difference being that parts of the roast were a bit drier. But even that depended on the part of the roast. This section that I cut off here was definitely on the dry side, but on the other side of the roast where there was more marbling, it honestly tasted almost exactly like the chuck eye roast that I have made in the past. The potatoes, carrots, and other vegetables were cooked perfectly, soft and fluffy on the inside, yet slightly crispy on the outside part that was sticking above the liquid. In terms of ingredients, the only thing that I did differently this time was that I added some yellow mustard, and really the only thing that I can note that tasted different was that the braising liquid was maybe slightly tangier from the vinegar and the mustard, but other than that, the taste was almost the same. And the cooking time for this two pound top round roast was the same as well, three hours total. Two hours covered at 350, then 40 minutes uncovered at 350, then 20 minutes with the oven turned off. In short, although it is drier, a top round roast, in my opinion, is a pretty good substitute for a chuck eye roast if you want something a little bit lower in calories or maybe a bit cheaper. As always, thanks for watching. See you next time.